Now, Timgad was founded by the Roman Emperor Trajan in AD 100. The most preserved Roman city over North Africa. It is a very well-known fact that the Roman Empire is one of the most important empires in the history of the world. Recently, shocking information from renowned archaeologists have revealed that apart from their origins in Rome, this empire extended its roots to the continent of Africa. According to these archaeologists, traces of a lost Roman Empire has been found at the edge of the Sahara Desert. It turns out that this empire was part of a lost city called Timgad. But how did this empire get to the sandy dunes of the Sahara? And how exactly was this lost city of Timgad found after? The Rediscovery of the Lost City of Timgad In the year 1765, a British explorer named James Bruce went to northern Africa, specifically Algeria. He arrived at the city ruins on December 12th. People think he might have been the first European to see the place in many, many years. He thought the city was small, but had nice buildings. Then, in 1790, he wrote a book called Travels to Discover the Source of the Nile. In that book, he talked about what he saw in Timgad. Bruce also talked about how the rediscovery of Timgad was the beginning of a new chapter in understanding the history of Roman cities in North Africa. There was one problem, though. The people in Britain didn't really believe Bruce at first. But in 1875, a guy named Robert Lambert Playfair, who worked for Britain in Algiers, went to see the city. He was inspired by what Bruce wrote. Then, in 1877, Playfair wrote his own book, called Travels in the Footsteps of Bruce in Algeria and Tunis. He talked about Timgad in that book. He said there are lots of old stone things all over the hills. Fast forward to the 1880s, and we see the French beginning extensive excavations at Timgad. This was a big moment because Timgad had been forgotten for many, many years. These excavations continued for a long time, right up until the 1960s. The French archaeologists worked very hard during this period, to uncover the many secrets hidden beneath the sands. They carefully dug up buildings, streets, and artifacts that had been buried for centuries. This work was not only physically demanding, but also required a lot of patience and dedication. Over these years, the archaeologists were able to piece together a detailed picture of what life might have been like in this Roman city. From the information they got, let's go back in time a little to see what Timgad must have looked like back then. Get ready to be blown away. The city of Timgad was started as a military colony by the Emperor Trajan in the year 100. He wanted it to be a strong base against the Berbers in the nearby Erez Mountains. The first people living in Timgad were mostly Roman veterans and colonialists. Even though these people had never seen Rome, and Timgad was far from Italy, Trajan worked hard to make sure Roman culture and identity were strong there. For the first few hundred years, Timgad was peaceful and became an important place for Christians by the 3rd century. In the 4th century, it became a center for the Dotanus Christian group. During this time, Timgad was known as Thamugadi and had a famous diocese. At the end of the 4th century, Bishop Obtat was a key leader for the Dotanus. After him, the city had two bishops, Gaudentus, who was a Dotanist, and Faustinus, who was a Catholic. When the Romans founded the city, they picked a spot with fertile land perfect for farming. This area was situated about 0.621 miles above sea level giving it a good climate and access to water sources for agriculture. As they planned out the city, they laid it out in a way that mirrored their designs back in Rome. You can still see this ancient blueprint in how the streets are arranged today. Two main streets form the backbone of the city's layout. One stretched from east to west and was called the Decuminus Maximus. It was like the city's main artery, bustling with activity and lined with impressive columns that showcased the grandeur of Roman architecture. The other major street, running north to south, was called the Cardo. It also had magnificent columns that added to the city's majestic appearance. However, unlike the Decuminus Maximus, the Cardo didn't extend all the way through the city. Its journey came to a halt at a spacious plaza, known as the Forum, where it intersected with the Decuminus. At the end of the big road on the west side of the city, there's a tall arch called the Arch of Trajan. It's about 39.4 feet tall, and was partially fixed up in 1900. The arch is mainly made of sandstone and looks like the Corinthian style with three arches. The one in the middle is about 11 feet wide. People also call it the Timgad Arch. There is a theater that can fit 3,500 people, and it's still in good shape. They use it for shows nowadays. Other important buildings include four places where people went to bathe, a library, and a basilica, which was like a big public hall. The Capitoline Temple is a special place for Jupiter, and it's about the same size as the Pantheon in Rome. Close to it, there's a square church with a round part at one end, 
which is from around the 7th century. In one of the holy places, they have pictures of a goddess named Africa. To the south of the city, there's a big fortress that was made by the Byzantine Empire when the city was getting older. But that's not all the city had. One of the most important structures that the old city of Timgad is known for is its phenomenal library. The library at Timgad is a special place with an interesting story behind it. It wasn't just any library. It was a gift from a person named Julius Quintinus Flavius Rugantius to the Roman people. The generous person decided to spend a whole lot of money, around 400,000 sesterces, to build this library. However, there's a bit of mystery surrounding this Julius Quintinus Flavius Rugantius character. We don't know much about him, which makes it tricky to pinpoint exactly when the library was built. But based on what experts have pieced together, they think it was probably constructed in the late 3rd or maybe even the 4th century. Now, let's talk about the library itself. Shaped like a triangle, the library is about 81 feet long and 77 feet wide, pretty spacious inside. Inside, there's a really cool feature, a big semicircle room right in the middle. The semicircle room, which is fitted with scrolls, has columns on three sides. On either side of this big semicircle room, there are two smaller rectangular rooms. The big semicircle room would have been used for reading, storing books, and maybe even giving lectures. There were special places in the walls for putting shelves, and these shelves likely had sides, backs, and doors. There might have been tall bookshelves and a desk for reading in the middle of the room. Even though the building style of the library at Timgad isn't super special, finding it is a big deal in history. It tells us that this Roman city had a really good library system, which means they were super into learning and culture. We don't know exactly how many books were there, but expert guess it could hold about 3,000 scrolls. Now that we've established what Timgad looked like, Let's talk about the Romans that lived there. Keep watching to see what we discovered about them. Roman Colonies and Veteran Settlements in Timgad Roman colonies and veteran settlements were a big deal back in ancient times, like around 509 BC to 476 AD. These were places where the Romans set up camp. They were basically a home away from home. Let's dig into what they were all about, starting with the beginning. So, way back in 509 BC, Rome decided to expand their territory. That's when they started founding colonies. These colonies were basically many versions of Rome, but in different parts of the world. It was their way of spreading their influence and keeping control over new lands. Now, fast forward to around 338 BC, and the Romans were really getting serious about this colony stuff. They started sending out groups of people to set up these colonies in strategic places. They wanted to make sure that they had a strong grip on important trade routes, and stuff like that. But here's the thing. Not all colonies were the same. Some were full-on cities, with all the fancy buildings and stuff, while others were more like military outposts. These military colonies were usually set up in border regions to keep an eye on things and defend against any troublemakers. Now, let's talk about veteran settlements. These were special colonies set up for retired soldiers. See, back in ancient Rome, being a soldier was a big deal. You fought for your country, and in return, you got some land and a nice little retirement package. So, after serving their time in the army, these soldiers would typically request for lands of their own. And that's where veteran settlements came in. The Romans would set aside some land for these retired soldiers to live on and farm. These veteran settlements were pretty cool places. They were usually set up in newly conquered territories, so the veterans got to be the first ones to stake their claim on the land. Plus, they got to live among their fellow soldiers, which was probably pretty comforting after spending so much time on the battlefield. But it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows in these settlements. Life could be tough, especially in the early days when they were still trying to get everything set up. They had to clear the land, build houses, and all fun stuff like that. Plus, there was always the risk of attacks from unfriendly neighbors. Despite the challenges, these veteran settlements played a big role in Roman society. They helped to secure conquered territories and kept the peace on the borders. Plus, they provided a nice retirement plan for all those brave soldiers who had served their country. As time went on, the Roman Empire kept expanding, and they kept setting up more colonies and veteran settlements all over the place. It was all part of their grand plan to conquer the world and bring civilization to the masses. But how exactly were the veterans treated? Well, the dedication and service of veterans were highly valued. And after serving for 25 years, they were rewarded with huge benefits. These rewards included land and sometimes even Roman citizenship. If they did not already have it, when veterans completed their service, they were given land in Timgad. This land was not just a small plot. It was large enough to support their families and help them start a new life. 
The grant of land was an important reward for many soldiers, especially since it provided them with a stable and secure future. The land grants were also a Roman major strategy to spread Roman culture and influence in newly conquered areas. By settling veterans in places like Timgad, Roman made sure that these areas remained loyal and under control. The presence of Roman veterans helped to Romanize the local population, spreading Roman customs, laws, and language. The veterans who settled in Timgad brought with them their experiences and skills from their time in the military. These skills were valuable in their new lives as civilians. Some veterans chose to become farmers, using their land to grow crops and raise animals. Farming was a common and essential occupation, providing food for the family and the community. The fertile lands around Timgad made farming a viable and rewarding option. Other veterans decided to invest in businesses. This could include a wide range of economic activities, such as opening shops, trading goods, or providing services. The skills they had learned in the army, such as discipline, organization, and leadership, were useful in running a business. By engaging in these activities, veterans contributed to the economic growth and prosperity of Timgad. But things don't end there. The residential lots in Timgad were designed to accommodate multiple families. This design ensured that the community was tightly knit. It means that people in Timgad lived in a way that promoted equality and strong social bonds. Families lived close to one another, which helped build a sense of community and mutual support. Neighbors could rely on each other for help and companionship, making life in Timgad more pleasant and cooperative. One of the key benefits that veterans received upon their retirement was Roman citizenship. For non-citizen soldiers, gaining citizenship was a huge and life-changing reward. Roman citizenship came with many privileges and rights. Citizens could vote, own property, marry legally, and pass on their wealth and status for their children. Citizenship also provided legal protection and the right to a fair trial. These benefits made citizenship a highly desirable reward for veterans who had served Rome faithfully. The process of granting citizenship to non-citizen veterans was part of Rome's strategy to allow people from different and diverse backgrounds into the empire. By offering citizenship as a reward for military service, Rome encouraged loyalty and dedication among its soldiers. It also helped to spread Roman culture and laws throughout the empire, as newly minted citizens brought Roman customs and practices back to their communities. Veterans who chose to become farmers after their service found that their new lives required different skills and knowledge compared to their time in the army. Farming was a demanding occupation that required hard work, patience, and an understanding of the land. Veterans had to learn how to plow fields, plant seeds, tend to crops, and harvest produce. They also needed to manage livestock, such as cattle, sheep, and goats, which provided milk, meat, and wool. The transition from soldier to farmer was not always easy, but many veterans adapted well to their new roles. The discipline and perseverance they had developed in the military helped them to succeed in farming. Moreover, the sense of independence and self-reliance that came with owning and working on their own land was deeply satisfying. Veterans took pride in their ability to provide for their families and contribute to the community's food supply. The skills that veterans had acquired in the army, such as leadership, organization, and strategic planning, were important in running a business. Many veterans became successful entrepreneurs, using their military experience to manage their enterprises effectively. Their involvement in business activities also helped to create jobs and stimulate economic growth in Timgad. But like all good things, the Roman Empire in Timgad eventually came to an end. How exactly did this decline happen? Let's find out. The Fall of Timgad The good times in Timgad did not last forever. In the 5th century, bad things started happening. The Vandals, who were a group of people from Europe, invaded the city. This happened around the year 430 AD. The Vandals were a Germanic tribe that had migrated across Europe. In 430 AD, the Vandals, led by King Joseric, crossed into North Africa. By 439 AD, they had captured Carthage, a major city in the region. From there, the Vandals launched raids across the territory, including Timgad. They destroyed many buildings and took away valuable things. The Vandals were known for their ruthless tactics and destructive methods. They looted cities, destroyed buildings, and killed or enslaved the inhabitants. Timgad was not spared from this fate. The city's infrastructure suffered extensive damage, and many of its inhabitants fled to escape the violence. The repeated attacks led to a huge decline in the city's population and economic activity. The once thriving city began to fall into despair, as the residents who remained struggled to maintain their homes and public spaces. This invasion was a big blow to Timgad. The city started to decline, which means it was not doing well anymore. The population started to decrease, 
many people left the city because it was no longer safe or prosperous. Despite the devastation caused by the Vandals, Timgad was not completely abandoned. In the late 6th century, the Byzantine Empire, which had succeeded the Roman Empire in the Eastern Mediterranean, launched a campaign to reclaim North Africa from the Vandals. Under the leadership of General Belisarius, the Byzantines successfully defeated the Vandals in 535 AD. The Byzantine Emperor, Justinian I, then sought to restore order and rebuild the cities that had been ravaged by the invaders. During this period, Timgad experienced a brief revival. The Byzantines undertook efforts to repair and rebuild the city's infrastructure. They restored public buildings, reconstructed damaged homes, and attempted to revive the local economy. The Byzantine administration also introduced new defenses to protect the city from future attacks. These measures included strengthening the city walls and fortifications to provide better protection against potential invaders. But the revival did not last. The city never fully regained its former glory or population levels. The resources and attention of the Byzantine Empire were stretched thin as they dealt with numerous other conflicts and challenges across their vast territory. As a result, the efforts to restore Timgad were limited and not enough to fully reverse the damage that had been done. Regardless of how hard the Byzantines tried, the city of Timgad never reached the same level of prosperity it had before the Vandals attacked. The final blow to Timgad came in the 8th century. During this time, the Arab expansion was in full swing. The Islamic Caliphate, under the Umayyad dynasty, was rapidly expanding its territories across North Africa and the Middle East. In 698 AD, the Arab forces captured Carthage, effectively ending Byzantine control in North Africa. The conquest continued, and by the early 8th century, the Arab armies had reached the region where Timgad was located. The Arab conquest brought significant changes to the region. The new rulers introduced Islam and established new administrative structures. The focus shifted to other cities and trade routes that were more strategically important for the new Islamic empire. As a result, Timgad, which had already been weakened by previous invasions and limited Byzantine restoration efforts, became increasingly marginalized. By the 8th century, Timgad was abandoned. The remaining inhabitants left the city, seeking safer and more prosperous areas to live. The once grand public buildings and homes fell into ruin as nature gradually reclaimed the land. Over time, the city was forgotten, buried under layers of earth and sand. However, this ruined city would later be discovered decades later. How did this happen? Stay tuned, because what we're about to tell you will surprise you. Timgad was first found again in the year 1765. People back then stumbled upon the ruins of this ancient place, but it wasn't until over a century later that serious digging began. One of the remarkable aspects of Timgad is how well it had been preserved despite the passage of time. The city was eventually abandoned and covered by the sands of the Sahara, which helped protect it from being destroyed by natural elements and human activity. Starting in the 1880s, French archaeologists took a deep interest in Timgad. They spent a lot of time and effort uncovering the secrets buried under the sands of Algeria. These excavation efforts went on for many years, continuing all the way until the 1960s. Through their hard work, they uncovered buildings, streets, and artifacts, giving us a clear picture of what life was like in this Roman city. The rediscovery and excavation of Timgad have been a long and complex process. Over the years, different teams of archaeologists have worked on the site, each contributing to our understanding of this ancient city. The work done between the 1880s and the 1960s laid the foundation for future research. Today, Timgad continues to be a focus of archaeological study, with experts from around the world coming to explore its ruins. In 1982, the importance of Timgad was officially recognized on a global scale. That year, it was added to the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. This was a huge step because it meant that Timgad was now protected by international agreements ensuring that the site would be preserved for future generations. The designation by UNESCO helped to preserve its historical and archaeological value, showing how important the city was in Roman times. Thanks to the dedicated efforts of archaeologists, the importance of Timgad extends far beyond just being another ancient site. Instead, it serves as some sort of gateway to bygone eras. Particularly, Timgad acts as a portal, offering us a precious peek into the experiences and existence of Roman veterans. Those soldiers who served in the mighty Roman Empire with valor and dedication. In essence, Timgad serves as more than just a collection of ancient ruins. It is a living testament to the resilience, resourcefulness, and resolve of Roman veterans. Through their eyes, we gain a deeper understanding of the difficulties of Roman life. The bonds of brotherhood forged in battle 
and the enduring legacy of one of history's greatest civilizations. So, do you believe that this lost city truly existed a long time ago? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.